So as many of you may or may not know, I am Hawaiian, and because of that, I've gotten to visit the many different Hawaiian islands, such as Kauai, as well as the big island, the Hawaii. Uh, and because of that, I have uh, grown a increased fondness for all things related to uh, Hawaiian culture. And Lattice Hawaii is no different. In this game, you're basically going to be playing tiles down on a board that have colors and shapes on them, and you're trying to match them with other tiles that have certain colors and shapes, trying to gather sunstones and half stones, while attempting to remove all the tiles in your pool. And if you can remove all of those and place them on the board before your opponents, you are going to win. It's got a lot of bright colors, it has a lot of basically hand and eye coordination with where you need to place the shapes and all that and uh, realizing how you need to kind of control this little board here that's going to have all of your tiles and a simple strategy but yet it has some elegance to it anyway let's go ahead and take a look down below i'll show you what's in the game i'll show you how to play and then we'll come up and i'll tell you what i think about the game lattice hawaii so here we have the game Lattice Hawaii, and as you can see, it has all the same type of components you would normally see in a Scrabble board with some interesting twists. As you can see, you have the tiles here, which on the opposite end are going to have these five different colors, as well as these different types of shapes or different kinds of things like you got the turtle, you got the flower, you've got the dolphin, bird, and uh, this little feather here. And there's going to be a combination of all the different colors and all the different shapes, in which case you're going to deal them out based on the of players in an equal fashion so that each player uh, gets the same number of tiles. There are also these little things here which you may or may not know of from Scrabble in which you're going to be able to, able to place your tiles down so when you select your random tiles and place them on this little area here it will hold five which is how many you're going to be using in the game. Then you have the stones. You're going to have these stones, which are called half stones. Blue stones, which represent half of a stone. When you combine them, it lets you use the power of a sunstone. And then sunstones themselves, these very powerful ability crystals that will allow you to take an extra action on your turn. In general, on your turn for the game, it's very simple how it works. You can, you can go ahead and look at the rules and it tells you just this bright and colorful rule book that on your turn, after you've been dealt these guys out, you take five each from your random separate piles. So in this case, he would get these and he would get these over here. You're going to take your five and they'll take one of the four actions here. You can play a colored tile, which is simply allowing yourself to take one of the tiles from your area here and place it down on the board. When you're starting off, that's all you can do is go ahead and place one in the middle of the board there and then of course at the end of your turn you're going to replenish and that would be one of the actions and that would end your turn another action would be to play a wind tile such as this guy here wind tiles will allow you to move any tile on the board and basically ignore the basic rules of play you can move it up down left or right irregardless of whether it's supposed to be able to be played there when you play these you discard them and then you're also going to get to take an extra action afterwards so wind tiles are very powerful and if you get them you're lucky and in that case there is some luck involved in the game as to whether you have those in your stack or not. Another action you could take is exchange tiles. If you don't like some or all the tiles in your little uh, holder here, you can take as many as you'd like out put them to the side, take new ones equal to the ones you took out, put them back in here, and shuffle the ones that you discarded back into your pool, because at the end of the game, you're going to need to get rid of all the tiles that you got at the beginning of the game. The last action you can do is pass. Passing is very simple, you just choose to do nothing. So that's the basic aspect of the game. You're going to be taking one action on your turn, passing and letting your opponent continue. Let's talk about now placing tiles. So I went ahead and placed my one tile here. Now it's this player's turn here. And in this case, this player can play any green tile adjacent to this one or any uh, any of these uh, flower, any flower tile next to it as well. So you're gonna go ahead and look at this board here. And as you can see, he's got a green gecko here and he can go ahead and place this guy here. In Hawaii, there is a ton of geckos. And and because it matches in color, that's not a problem at all. And that would end his turn He choose if he choose, chose to do that. He'd go ahead and take an extra one here and place it like so. And then it'd be the next player's turn. They would look here and see what they wanted to do. And in this case, there's no green anymore. But there is a flower here. And additionally, I could play a wind tile, which would let me move one of these guys in, in any way I wanted, up, down, left, or right. Let's go ahead and play this one here, placing it just like that. And then, of course, taking an extra tile from my pool and passing to the next player. That's how the game works. Now, of course, it gets a little more complex as you go on because it's going to be more difficult to place your tiles down. For instance, if this player's if it was this player's turn, he's going to have to play a uh, 
tile that will allow him to place something. If he wanted to place it here, he'd have to place a tile that represented this color and this symbol, or this color and this symbol. So if he had a red gecko, or if he had a green flower, that would be okay. Unfortunately, he has a blue flower, which allows him to place next to this flower. But because it's neither blue, uh, green nor a gecko, this would not work for him. And the same thing would go for this one as well. However, if he wanted to, like I said before, he can play this wind tile. He can then go ahead and move this, irregardless of the rules of the game, discard this tile here, and then place again. Another interesting rule for the game is on your turn, you can never draw up tiles until the end. So if you run out of tiles, regardless of how many extra turns you take, that's going to end your turn. Then you'll draw back up to five tiles. Let's talk about some other stuff here. These are the sunstone spaces on the board, much like in Scrabble, how as you progress throughout the board, you're going to get triple points, triple letter scores, etc, etc. In this game, whenever you place a tile on any of these spaces here, you're going to take a sunstone. These will allow you to take extra turns on your turn when you utilize them. The same can be said for half stones, but the difference between those and these are you'll need two of these half stones in order to perform a single bonus action, whereas with a sunstone you will only need one. And how do you get them other than these, this, this area here? Well, there's actually other ways, and the rulebook explains to you that you're going to need to either score a double, a trefoil, or a lattice. And if you can accomplish that, you're going to get either one half stone, which is one of these babies, you're going to get one sunstone, or if you manage to do the very, very difficult ability of a lattice, which is having a shape in all four areas, you can get two sunstones. Uh, let's go ahead and give you a little example of that before we continue before we continue on. So for instance, let me go ahead and see if I can find a really good for instance here. If I had something like that, that, and maybe that, then as long as I played a purple bird here, I would be okay, or maybe if I played a yellow bird here, that would actually be an, a better example of play. So if I actually had a yellow bird, this is yellow, and these are birds, so this piece of it was a yellow bird, it would happen to correspond with all of these, and that would score me a lattice, which would give me the two sunstones. Now, of course, that's a very, very challenging feat, but if you're able to to pull it off, that's going to give you bonus sunstones, which gives you bonus actions on your turn. And you can use as many sunstones and half stones as you want on your turn, provided you can utilize them for actions. And remember, you only get five tiles on your turn, regardless of how many of these you have. The tree full is the same function as the lattice, but it's only going to require you to attach to three. And then the double only requires you to attach to two. But that's the pretty much the basic idea of how you're going to be getting these half stones here. Whereas the sunstones, you can get them from tree full and lattices, as well as these spaces on the board. At the end of the game, Game. If you have all of your tiles placed on the board, probably not like this though, <laughs> then and your opponent does not, you're going to simply win the game. And utilizing these is definitely going to be the way to achieve your victory. Sometimes you're going to want to separate your tiles out and get new ones because as the game progresses to the very end, it's going to be very, very challenging to be able to fit all your pieces in, especially with uh, more players as the competition will grow in, in uh, leaps and bounds. Anyway, that's the basic idea of the game let us Hawaii let's come up and discuss the game and whether or not you should pick it up so as you can imagine when I saw let us Hawaii I was rather intrigued and I was excited to take a look at it because I love the colors I love the shapes and symbols this is a game that my wife I would assume when I first saw it would like due to the fact that it's got a very puzzly nature and for me it was just the vibrant beauty of the game and of course the theme as well in the game you're I should explain a couple caveats and variations you can first of all choose to play with more than four players by even attaching multiple boards together if you'd like as well as by playing in teams uh, there's also some modes that will remove the randomness of the wind tiles by making sure that each player gets an equal number of wind tiles in their pile to make it less likely for somebody to have a slight edge on, over their competition but if you play the base game you're simply going to shuffle all the tiles and deal them all out equally um, the last thing here too although there are a lot more variations is the timer mode they actually give you a timer in the game which will make players turns be slightly more more uh, expedient because they're at risk of not going to be able to do anything and in this game the most important thing is to be able to play tiles playing tiles gets rid of tiles from your pool getting rid of your tiles from your pool is what has you win the game and sunstones and half stones are the most important thing attached to your basic action that will let you distribute more tiles 
for each turn that you take. And if you're able to spend a sunstone to place another tile to get another sunstone or two, that's very, very powerful and very, very important. Setting yourself up in future turns is important as well, as well as determining whether or not you think your opponents have certain colors and trying to persuade them from being able to place those by kind of countering them and placing those tiles that you might have to block formations they're attempting to complete. The wind tiles are a nice little twist of the game too, because when you play those, you can move the game into different formations that normally you wouldn't see, as well as giving you an opportunity to play stuff like tree foals as well as the uh, the halatus. And if you can pull those off, it's going to grant you a lot of actions. Lots of actions means lots of likelihood of you winning, and that's basically how you go about the game. It's very simple. You don't have to remember a lot of words or phrases, none of that stuff like you would in Scrabble, but it does have the feel of that game at its heart, at its core, because you're basically expanding a branch of these tiles and placing them out as best as you can to score points and points are just technically placing all of your tiles out. I really really enjoyed this game. I'm not a huge puzzle game fan but when I see one that's got a Vite, bright and vibrant theme, a theme that I really, really enjoy. It's something I wanted to really take a look at. I go ahead and take a look at it. And in this case, I am very glad I did. It has a lot of cool components to it. I really like the, the coloration. I like the quality of the pieces as well. These are all basically plastic pieces and they have a sticker attached to them, but they work really well. I haven't seen any come off, no issues with them as well as these little plastic holders here, which also say lattice on them. It's very nice. Uh, it's got a little see-through thing, but you can't see anything on your opponent's side. And of course, the board here. Everything about it is really cool. You have the uh, the, the uh, different. Let's see the this guy here. I don't know what you want to call this thing. The the fact that it does the the light reflects, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, if you're a puzzle gamer and you like games that involve placing tiles down on a board, you're going to enjoy this game. It has a competitive edge to it, but it's not too competitive at the same time. You're not really worried about if your opponent takes your space as much. Sure, it could give you a, a lettuce or it could give you a tree fold, but in the end of the day, you can still place down tiles and you might have backup plans and whatnot. Of course, the more you play, the better you're going to get. And it's very likely that experienced gamers with this specific type of a game are going to beat you up until the point where you're gonna get better and become more skilled in it. In fact, just playing it once or twice, you bringing a friend on to play it, it's still likely that you're going to win this game just because you'll have the ins and outs of how it's supposed to go. Uh, as far as replayability goes, I mean, as long as you like this type of a puzzle game, you can play it as many times as you want and the board's always going to be different because that's based on the tiles involved with what you have in front of you. However, it's pretty much the same style of gameplay other than what you choose to make up for it as far as strategy goes. Similar to games like chess and checkers as to how that would go. There's nothing unique as far as the, the base game, but of course there are nothing unique as far as extra rules and components as far as base game goes. But there are some little added bonus bonuses like this timer here. That's something really unique because it pushes the edge to more of a competitive nature. And of course being able to play on teams or even doubling the board, which I have no idea how it will work or if I'd like that or not. But there is the option to do that, as well as a couple other ones. One that talks about a kid mode. Let me see if I can find anything on here. Kitty mode, there's an end game, spike, fast start, the timed matches, and then if you want four more players, and then of course uh, the, the match play. So there are some variants of the game which will change it up if you're really interested. But overall, I really like Lattice Hawaii, and for you puzzle gamers out there, you're gonna dig it as well. Is it a game I'm gonna play all that often? Eh, probably not, but my wife is definitely gonna wanna jump on board, and whenever she does, I'm gonna wanna play this game just for the theme alone. I really, really like this game. Take a look at it down below in the description if it's something you're interested in. Uh, checking out and thank you for watching.